guys, it's Natalie and today I wanted to talk about perfumes and fragrances because I feel like I don't really talk about that as like a favorite thing, but I'm definitely kind of like a perfume hoarder. Um, <laughs> and I wanted to kind of go over just every fragrance I've ever worn, starting from when I first wore fragrances when I was probably 13. Before we get into it, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. So this is the first fragrance I ever wore and this is pretty old. This one is actually not the first one. I went through a whole one of these. They look different now but they still make them surprisingly and this is the Tony Moly perfume bar and they're all like bunnies <laughs> and it's a solid perfume so you like rub it on rather than spraying. And this one's in the scent Bloom Bunny, which has top notes of lemon, floral middle notes of jasmine and rose, and woody base notes of amber and musk. It just smells sort of like young and it's definitely very floral and it's a little bit powdery, but there is like a sweetness to it. It's so interesting smelling old fragrances because your scent memory is your longest memory. The way things smell evokes more of a time period than like taste would. And when I smell this, I smell the time I went on vacation in San Francisco in um, 2014. <laughs> um, it just smells like that to me. It's like, it's just so specific and I, I really liked wearing this a lot. I can't wear it anymore now because it makes me think of that time. <laughs> but I still just absolutely love the way it smells and it still smells the same. I don't know, I must have gotten this one in like 2015 or something. I ventured into spray perfumes. Um, this is Sprinkle and Bloom, which was a brand for anthropology. And this bottle is totally empty because this perfume was literally like water. Like you could spray it like a hundred times and like it, it wouldn't last for more than five minutes. But that's perfect for like a 13 year old girl. And it literally smells like going to middle school. <laughs> this one is in Tangelo and Blue Iris. And the notes are Juicy Orange, Peach and Mango and Rhubarb and Vanilla. And... Oh my god, if it just doesn't literally smell like, like a, like a fruity room spray. I have searched for like a more adult version of this kind of scent that has the like orange, peach, and mango kind of like tropical orange fruits smell. And I have not found one yet. Um... It, this is like really unique because of that. This one was kind of my more like mature fragrance to me. This is from the brand Royal Apothic, which still exists actually. And um, <laughs> me being like all these little perfume brands, I would pick up at Anthropology and then they just like disappear into nothingness. But this one is Kensington Garden, which they don't make anymore. But this one was Gardenia, Jasmine, Lily, Tuberose, and Fern. And this is kind of like the notes that I still really love. Like, I think I must have been like 14 wearing this one and I still wear a lot of perfumes with these notes in them, which we'll get to later. <laughs> There's something about this one specifically that smells kind of old. Like, it smells like a little bit like a grandma. <laughs> and I used to really, really like those smells and I sometimes still do like a little bit like powdery grandmotherly scent but this one definitely has like a grandma's bathroom smell to it um <laughs> and now uh, when I became a sophomore in high school I was that was like the peak of my time watching beauty youtubers this is YSL Black Opium which I think everyone knows it's kind of like one of the most famous perfumes and this one this one has so much going on in it which is what makes it really interesting to me the top notes are pear pink pepper and orange blossom middle notes are coffee jasmine bitter almond licorice and the base notes are vanilla patchouli and a couple different woods and it really doesn't smell like anything in particular i think you really get that like orange blossom coffee thing like 
it's really it has a kind of like sweet floral coffee smell to it I don't really like on me it just like a lot of those basins don't come through but it's definitely woodsy and rich and just very seductive and it's not it's not my personal vibe and like I went through this whole thing because I actually do like the way it smells which is weird because usually I don't like peppery or licorice or patchouli scents but this one it smells really really good it's just not how I smell <laughs> it's like I can't really imagine wearing this one and I honestly just wore it because I thought it smelled nice which is true it does smell nice <laughs> me wearing black opium kind of opened the door to me wearing other sort of like vanilla -y scents. This is KBD Saint or at the time Kat Von D and I don't think they make these anymore. They did like, like many years ago they had like a Saint and Sinner perfume and then they re-released them and this was the re-release one and I, I remember not liking it first and then like really liking it so much that I went back and bought it. <laughs> but the top notes are Mirabelle and Clary Sage. The middle notes are Almond Blossom, Jasmine, Lily of the Valley. And the base notes are Vanilla, Peach, and Woods. And this one is just like, this is very like Jasmine Vanilla kind of a scent. Like it smells really like vanilla-y sweet, but there is that like Jasmine floral. And... I really liked this one. You can see, like, I don't go through perfume, like, that much unless it's a small size, but, like, I went through, like, a decent amount of this one, and I wore this basically all sophomore year of high school, and because of that, I just don't think I could, I could ever wear it again, and, like, I don't wear perfumes that have vanilla in them anymore. It's just, like, for me, something about wearing a vanilla perfume is so, like, something I wore in high school. <laughs> But, um, this really, like, evokes that time, which is really weird, and I don't know, I just, I remember just, like, loving the bottle of this one. It's got this, like, skull kind of, like, filigree pattern on it, which is my favorite, and I don't know, it still smells good. It's just, like, I'm not gonna put it on. <laughs> So this one is one that I wore like really briefly in the winter for a couple winters because this is like a true winter scent and this is Lalia Velvet as Night and Lalia is the same house as like um, Tokyo Dark or whatever that one brand is called. They have this like, it's just like really intense and I tried looking at this perfume and I could not find anything about it anywhere and it definitely has that like spicy sweet thing but it's definitely more like fruity forward than like the YSL one and it's just really intense and it kind of smells like a candle like a <laughs> like a like a soap bar it kind of smells like a like a fragranced soap bar um it's just it has a little bit of like a powderiness to the spiciness it's like it's not my thing and I wore it for a period of time because it had that like spicy kind of warm thing that I was into and it's just it's just a lot it's it's way stronger than something I would wear now and now this is a royal apothic scent that you can still get that they still sell this one's English rose and I love rose and this is like, I've had a couple sizes of this one, and this is one that I just wear. It's so easy to wear. But this one is bergamot, grapefruit, rose, and then linden flower, geranium, orchid blossom, vanilla, sandalwood. And it's really just like that like powdery, a little bit, kind of like wet rose smell. And... There's a little bit of a fruitiness to it. There's a little bit of a freshness, but overall you really get that like rose smell. But I wore this one in high school and like on its own. And I just still, I still like it, but it still is sort of like powdery. And while I do sometimes like a powdery floral, I feel like I would rather pair this with like something else that's coming up. And 
it just has that kind of like once again like soap this fragrance these next fragrances are all ones that like are new like i wear them on rotation and this is jo malone nectarine blossom and honey and this is so good this is that like really wet fresh fruity floral thing like fruit trees like the buds on fruit trees after the rain <laughs> it just has that like really um wet fruity floral smell and this one is cassis acacia honey and peach <laughs> the peach really comes through like it's so it's so like fresh feel like i'm cutting into a peach right now like and then the honey it's like sweet but in a natural way it's not like gourmand sweet it's really really interesting and i love this to add that fresh note to other powdery perfumes like that rose one it's just like adds the freshness um a little bit green which is something i like i like a kind of like slightly grassy scent and this one's just like springtime in a bottle it's literally like spring like it's snowing outside and i just sprayed this and i'm transported to like the spring this is toca florence and this one is bergamot pear and gardenia and it's just like gardenia forward it's like it's just straight up gardenia like uh when you go to the botanic gardens or something and there's that like enclosed space uh where it's tropical or maybe you live in a tropical place <laughs> um i live in the midwest it's not tropical here but um there's like that kind of like tropical greenhouse and there's banana trees and all those sort of like tropical plants and there's a giant gardenia bush and this just literally smells like that it smells exactly like the gardenia bush it's just straight up gardenia it's so good and this is the kind of thing that like i will pair with anything like if I, I put on any perfume and i'm like i want it to be a little bit sweeter it's like this is what i put on it's just like a wet white floral and it is just it's so good and i i it's so specific gardenia is a really really specific flower and it's not for everyone because it does have that like wet greenness to it but if you like gardenia this is literally gardenia from the bush in a bottle it's perfect and then now my all-time favorite fragrance i'm gonna put it on even though i just put that joe malone one on but like everything goes with the joe malone one so it's fine this is the replica by Maison margella um flower market oh my god this is my favorite perfume this is literally like what i smell like <laughs> um the describes has freesia rose and cedarwood and it's literally like it's that rose thing that I love about like the English rose perfume, but not powdery. Like there's nothing powdery about it. It has, but it has that like freesia kind of combo in there. This is a really crisp and really fresh for rose. It has that like, it has the wet smell. <laughs> this is really like a flower market after it rained. It's like a field of flowers and it's just rained. Um, <laughs> it's just really, really good. And I love the little bottle on this one with like the kind of apothecary style bottle and the like twine around it and whatnot. I just wish I had a cap. These don't come with caps, which is weird. But this one's just my favorite fragrance. It's beautifully feminine really soft is not strong at all like but it lasts so it'll last on you like for most of the day but you're not going to be like filling up a room with your fragrance which is like my least favorite thing in a fragrance and this one is really just like pure wet soft floral it's just it's my favorite fragrance <laughs> So that's it. Those are all my perfumes and the different time periods I wore them. The feelings they evoke, which I think is so interesting about fragrance. That's like my favorite kind of thing about fragrances is that you can wear a fragrance and then like never wear it again. But then every time you smell it, you think about that time that you were wearing it. And that's why I like to get new fragrances because it just brings you to a time period. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.